Hello and welcome to our session Growing an Inner Source Culture at SAP here at the Inner Source Common Spring Summit, this time not in Madrid but from our home offices. We are Guilherme de Agustin and Michel Graf from SAP, and we are very happy to share some insights about our Inner Source journey with you today. Great, so let's start with a quick introduction. My name is Michael. I'm a development expert at SAP Sports and Entertainment, and my focus is UI development. So I heavily co contributed to SAP's UI framework OpenUI 5, which also started as an inner source project and has now been released as open source for a couple of years. I also like to share knowledge and led two open SAP courses on SAP's free learning platform. And I am Guilherme, so I work for globalization services, human capital management. I work with many technologists, and I was always fond of sharing knowledge and collaborating with people and continuously improving our software and tools and processes. Cool. So um, what you can see is we come from different departments and different backgrounds, but what we have in common is we uh, collaborate across organizational borders, and that felt absolutely normal to us. And as such, we became inner source enthusiasts in our company. So I would like to speak a little bit about our company. SAP is a company with a big history. So it was founded in 1972 in Germany, and it has 440,000 customers and currently employs more than 100,000 employees all around the globe. It specialized in enterprise solutions with a strong focus on the cloud. In the past year, it was uh, ranked number three on Forbes Global 2000 in the category software and programming. SAP has grown a lot in the past years organically, but it also has grown through acquisitions. These are big companies that we acquired from different areas. In total, we have acquired around 67 companies since 1996. So this is an average of 2.8 per year. This comes with a lot of challenges. So you can imagine we get people from different backgrounds, uh, with different expertise and they bring different technologies into the game. But it's also uh, an opportunity, an opportunity to learn from each other. And I think it's a very good opportunity for applying the inner source techniques. So let me speak a little bit about the SAP culture. We have a set of behaviors. Tell it like it is. Stay curious. Embrace the differences. Keep the promise and build bridges, not silos. I think if you look at these behaviors, you see that they are very well connected with the values that inner source brings and it inherits from open source values of openness, values of sharing, values of meritocracy. So thanks, Guilherme. Let's have a look at how we do inner source at SAP now. And I would like to start with our personal journey towards inner source. And for me, that certainly was the OSCON 2015. Uh, where Denise Cooper from the Inner Source Commons actually held the keynote about Inner Source and how they do it at PayPal. That session inspired me greatly, so when I came back, I saw a lot of potential to do new Inner Source projects uh, at work. My UI framework, UI5, it was already Inner Source but very much established. So, me and my team, we decided that every new project and prototype and innovation we we'll try as Inner Source. So, we just created a GitHub repository created a readme file, some nice documentation and easy to use instructions. And we were surprised how fast people uh, picked that up and actually contributed from inside and outside our organization. So um, I reached out to other people at SAP, also collecting their experiences. And I found more people like Guilherme and others that also had similar experiences. And we thought there are a lot of synergies. Let's join forces and try something. What we did is we, together with the Open Source Program Office, started an initiative to leverage inner source at SAP. We show some more details later on that. I just want to start with some examples first. The first example I would like to make is the UI5 Markdown documentation. On top of our framework, we have a lot of technical documentation and there's always code and technical uh, documentation involved. So the developers work directly on the documentation, but they were not able to edit it directly. So they always had to basically indirectly tell and instruct people how to change something there. And we found out that from our documentation tool, there's a markdown export. So in about two days, we forged a prototype and we just moved the documentation to GitHub. The first contribution actually came after three days from another team just correcting a typo, but it was a good start. And people just uh, started adopting this repository for their teamwork. And after a couple of months, we had already more than 500 contributions. 
And this is a good example to see how inner source projects can also change existing processes and really improve the working mode. All right, PM to you. Next All right, example. I'll start talking about Piper. So SAP in its big history has transitioned from an on-premise company to a, a cloud company. And as such, we had to adapt and had to create some tooling for the new world. So Piper came to uh, solve the problem of uh, continuous integration and continuous deployment. This started from the very beginning as an inner source project. And it's a set of reused components for CI CD on the SAP ecosystem. It's used by more than 330 projects internally, and it has seen already more than 80 contributors. This project was partly open source in 2017, and you can see the link below. So I think that this is a very good example of something we see uh, with inner source, and it can happen quite frequently. Even if you don't intend from the beginning, it can be a stepping stone into open source. Now, another project I want to show you, this is Bridge, a different type of project. It's an internal dashboard. So it is an internal tool, not used in the development process, but by basically any employee at SAP. Bridge was also also inner source since the beginning. This is a very dear project to me because this was the first inner source project I contributed to even before I knew what inner source was. It can receive contributions from different types. So from minor bug fixes to features to entire new mini apps in this dashboard. It's a very good one to start in our company and it has seen already contribution from more than 100 contributors. So I'll give back to Michael and also he can use these examples and talk a little bit about the types of inner source projects at SAP. So we see some characteristics that reoccur when we look at the existing inner source projects. And I just mapped these examples also to these types of projects. And the first one that is really common is that we have a repository that is centrally owned by one team in an organization and contributors come from other teams. And that is pretty much from the governance side, the most simple use case because the rules are set by the organization that uh, owns the code base and the maintenance is pretty much with them. But it has some great benefits to go in a source. So for example, if you have a bottleneck project where everybody's waiting for the latest features, then people can just start contributing instead of waiting for the central team to implement them. And it really greatly empowers the consumers to um, add some features and bug fixes from their side. And speaking of bug fixes, they also give very fast feedback on the latest release, and they also could provide very fast fixes for issues that occur. And the common use cases we see here is the documentation that I've just shown before as an example. Also products, because they have also governance behind it and product standards and uh, architectures and also frameworks like our UI framework, UI5. Now, the second characteristics we see is a managed repository where there are certain subcomponents that are coming from other teams and that are actually in their responsibility. So you can think of like adapters and plugins for tools or infrastructure projects where certain assets are just contributed from other organizations because they probably know best what to implement there and they are responsible for their part of the project. This greatly increases adoption of the project and it also eases the integration because you have these bridges to different technologies with these uh, subcomponents. And it's great for collaboration because people align on a central architecture and it makes it a lot easier to consume this project. And what we see here is that the complexity of the collaboration, it increases basically the more stakeholders are involved. And certainly you also need to think about what happens when a stakeholder joins the project or leave again. So what we also see is that it really requires a cultural change to go in our source. And I found these nice statements also on the Inner Source Summit two years ago in, in Stuttgart, uh, where they stated that it's really a change from adaption to integration, from silo to collaboration, blocking to mentoring, from blame to trust. And I think these are all very positive uh, aspects. But sometimes they are uh, seen as really positive. So it's faster development, increasing the overall quality, and it's more fun and rewarding. But sometimes it's also seen as fear because people can fear the loss of control of their project and their resources and fear of scope creep or unclear responsibilities. And that's where we saw the people that already were already doing inner source that we need to provide really good reference projects and really good documentation so that people are really 
aware of the positive aspects and uh, see how this can be done. So in our inner source group that we formed, uh, we really drive inner source. And we do this together with the open source program office. They take care of processes related to open source, but also internal processes. And they uh, also lead this inner source track. We work together as a team to provide this inner source methodology and really encourage new people to initiate new projects and to try it out. So everybody can join and contribute and we define new uh, working modes and structures as we grow our group. What we also did is we defined a role called Inner Source Ambassador, and this helps for onboarding new projects and colleagues because our organization is very big. So it's actually beneficial to have people in certain regions or organizations that can be an ambassador for people in their vicinity. And how we run this group actually is very interesting too, because we run it just like any other Inner Source project. So we have a GitHub repository where we have the documentation. So you can see this on the right side. We have uh, task planning with Jira and GitHub. We have Slack chat and sync calls to align. We promote also projects in regular meetups and we generally provide tools and channels where people can find projects. So let me get back and talk a little bit about the inner source group strategy. Our strategy currently is quite simple. We are trying to raise awareness and engagement in the company with the topic inner source. What we do, we try to spread the word. What you see here, this is me. So I am presenting inner source in one of the biggest events for developers at SAP. So what we also do is outreach. We try to actively find projects that we think it's strategic for inner source where they could benefit, but also become a lighthouse for inner source inside the company. We also try to find uh, actions that would help increase the management support for inner source because that is uh, key so that people feel safe to collaborate to inner source projects. We also have close collaboration with uh, initiatives inside SAP that are related to developer relations. Anything that is trying to promote uh, change in development culture, we try to go there and engage with them so that they know inner source and make inner source part of their business too. And we are also collaborating with the inner source commons and we want to do that more in the future. So we are here presenting this today, but I am also personally trying to engage more and more with the community and I have already sent some pull requests to the website. All right, so what's the outlook? What do we see next in the future of SAP for inner source? I'll share some figures with you. So we did an open source survey in the last year and we found out that 80% of the survey respondents, they know already what inner source is. And 70% would like to contribute if suitable projects are available. Only less than 2% are skeptical with regards to inner source, which seems very good, but we have to do something to ensure that the 70% can find the projects uh, that they want to collaborate to. We think that this is the right time to drive inner source even further and there are two things we are doing uh, in the near future. So we are creating a portal uh, where people can find inner source projects to contribute to. And we are also implementing the inner source gig marketplace pattern. Right now, people can create positions in the marketplace and uh, say how somebody can contribute to their projects and people can go to this marketplace and try to find uh, suitable positions where they can do a contribution or learn something or anything like that. So that said, I think the only final word we want to give you is inner source rocks. So we believe in that. And with that said, thank you all. You can find us in Twitter, GitHub, and send us a mail. Here is the information. Again, thanks for your attention. Thank you.